Those of you playing the game tonight and those of you at home, do you remember a short-lived show from the 80s called Cheers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> short-lived. Is that, the, is that the show that stars Theodore Danson? It sure does. Theodore. Grant Berger. <laughs> Theodore Danson the first. Uh, We're we'll watching to... it now. Are you? I was, it was a little misdirect, short-lived. No, uh, obviously one of the greatest sitcoms of all time. And if you disagree with that, the Matthews of the world, uh, you cannot disagree with the fact that it I, is uh, one of the most Cheers. successful. Why would you think I, I don't like I feel Cheers. like you'd have something against Cheers. They did something that you don't agree with. You didn't like Norm. Maybe you didn't <laughs> like Cliff. Why wouldn't you like Norm or Cliff? Uh, you'd find a reason. Well, <laughs> see, I have I no have, doubt that if you rewatched it, Matthew, I'm sure you would have sure, plenty I'm of sure things sure to hate. It feels dated, but I haven't watched it in many years. So. <laughs> I mean, it's but what, what, what? It's a show about a Boston baseball player in the '80s, and I don't know. I don't think a Boston baseball team really did anything remarkable, particularly not in the year 1986. <laughs> what a funny guy brought jokes to side by side. This is my intro, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when I was uh, uh, going through my pilot writing phase, I was like, I'm going to go back and watch some of the classics. And everyone always says the, the, the pilot to Cheers is one of the best ever written. I was like, all right, great. I'll just I'll go back to there because I'm sure I watched it when I was a kid, uh, but I don't remember it. And it was on YouTube in like four parts at the time. And so I watched it and it is a perfect pilot episode of a tv series it's just unbelievable oh, I'll how they go back and watch it oh it's so it's 22 minutes and they create you know you see all the characters uh, the main characters all of what the conflict is the whole setup what the franchise is it's just a an unbelievable pilot is frazier in there uh yeah frazier no. no he's not in the no, first frazier's one not the pilot uh no he, i knew he it comes didn't later. have all the characters ah. He came in. Did he come in and later in that first season or not until the second season? No, I think I think he was in second season. Oh, he okay. Well, that's fine. Because there was an off-screen rivalry between Kelsey Grammer and Shelley Duvall, right? Or wasn't that, that a whole thing? Shelley Duvall. Well, would that Shelley, affect anything? Not Shelley Duvall. Uh, <laughs> Shelley Long. Shelley Long. Shelley Long. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was thinking fairy tale theater. Uh, <laughs> yes, they were filming across the lot. There were really a lot of problems on the cheers. Set. But wasn't there wasn't there a whole thing like she she didn't like him and he didn't like her and that was well, one of the she, reasons she left. She seemed like she had some issues uh, across the board and she left the show. And this is really getting to my point, Matthew. Cheers at the height of its success, lost coach, the actor that played coach died, uh, and then uh, Shelley Long left the show and they replaced him with uh, Woody. Uh, uh, playing Woody, Woody Harrelson playing Woody, and uh, Kirstie Alley playing uh, why her name's escaping me right now, Skid. Who? Who? Kirstie uh, Alley. No, Kirstie Alley was Shelley Long, right? Right. And what, she, what was Kirstie Alley's character's name, Skid? Yeah, Rebecca. Rebecca Howe. That's Rebecca right. Howe. Right. Rebecca okay. Howe. Replace them, and the show never lost a beat. What I'm trying to get to is side quest, side chess is the cheers of role-playing games. <laughs> oh, my God. This what is I'm where I'm trying to. Now I know Matthew didn't like that. This is what I'm getting at. Listen, I didn't... It, it's right there for all of us to see. I'm just saying it aloud, okay? Everyone's thinking it. I'm just connecting the dots <laughs> for you guys and all of you looking at home. Because everybody's been thinking about that all week. Like, oh, my God. SQSS is the cheers of RPG live shows. Well, thank which, you. Which one of us is Eddie? Because I'm a little worried. Who's Eddie? Jay Thomas. Jay Thomas. Why can't I picture an Eddie? He was oh, Carla's, Carla's husband. husband. Oh, and he God. got of fired the from the show. You Eddie? Yeah, because he get he got he got fired so unceremoniously. That's what was my point. Like, who? Oh. Which one of us is going to get dumped? Grant. Yes. <laughs> Grant, <laughs> uh, based off of behavior, it's not Grant. I gotta tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Grant yeah. is the uh, Gary's old time tavern of SideQuest Side Session. <laughs> <laughs> that I can that I can see. It's so funny that so many of our viewers are like in their twenties. They're like, "What's what's a Cheers?" <laughs> yeah, sounds, I, I feel like I want to hear from them who who they think each of us is, character wise. I'd rather not. Let's move I on. I, I, I think Skid can nail this. Uh, yeah, Skid, who are we all? Uh, I'm probably Cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cliff. Wait, Wait, back. Back choice, yeah. Yes. Grant is Norm. <laughs> oh, thanks. Grant's a new one. Grant! Uh, Grant! Troy is Sam, because he was a bartender. <clears throat> and Joe is Woody. 
Joe Swinney. <laughs> and who am I? Oh, Matthew is Carla's husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Lilith. Yeah, Matthew. <laughs> Matthew is really, Lilith. He really is. I was yeah. really I just is. thinking the name. I thought you were going to say Frazier, but still, this. Matthew, it's so well much done. better. Well it's done. so much better than Frazier. <laughs> 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 oh god! <sighs> now I just want to watch Cheers. How you guys doing tonight? I just got back in town. I've been uh, been out of town all uh, since Monday, up in Lake Placid, one of my wife and my favorite places in the world to go. Just got back today, and I get to come home and play with my best buds. How are I'm you? I'm very guys? excited. I'm fantastic. Maybe I'm, I'm also very excited to play tonight. I think it has something to do with last week's sesh. But tonight yeah. I'm like, let's get into it. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, I had a great time last week and we didn't uh, we didn't play at all this week. This is our first time playing this week. So yeah. I feel fresh. And ready last to play. Week we play well, we had a meeting Tuesday night, then we played Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It was a brutal week. I mean, uh, not all of us played all of those days, but brutal week. And then we step back and now it's like, all right, ready to play again. We need a little <laughs> palate cleansing few days off. Uh, Matthew, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm a little tired. Last week was uh was busy. I thought this week was gonna be less busy and turned out not to be true. No, no. How are you? I'm good. Well, Matthew, you must be excited. You released your podcast, man. Good. Hey, you released a podcast. Hey. Yes. Climbing up the charts. Climbing up the charts. Uh, what, yeah, uh, we cracked category? the top. Uh, fiction. Drama. Right, good. Not competing, otherwise. Of course. No, <laughs> that's, that was contractual. You'd be in breach of contract. <laughs> yeah, <there>. You'd forfeit <laughs> your shares. I, I, had to get, I, had to get explicit for, I had to get explicit email assent from the board to... Uh, <laughs> 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 of which I am, I had to recuse myself from the vote, of course. But uh... and you still <laughs> barely won three to two. <laughs> <laughs> and as usual, you got uh, votes from Troy and I and Skid, and then Grant voted two weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about it. You guys are just willy-nilly authorizing it. podcasts left and right. And that's the problem with this enterprise, first off. <laughs> Secondly. Yes. It did release. It, uh, yeah, we cracked the top 20 in fiction podcasts. Nice. Uh, got more that's content great. coming out. Nice. I listened, I listened to it all today. It's really good. I'm, good. I'm really excited to see where it goes. It's a, um, what's the name of the city? It's Astavia. Asta, yeah, I'm I'm super curious. Um, it's a very good mystery kind of thing going on. The the voice actors are amazing. Uh, this, it's really exciting. We just discovered right before we went out on air that one of the actors who is a really close friend of mine and is also a writer was Joe's former client. Yes. Oh, that's who you're yes. talking about. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. and uh, not just any client, but a client who I just loved. I mean, we got along great. We worked on a lot of stuff together. Um, I Let's be honest. I had a lot of clients I barely ever talked to <laughs> because they just didn't work that much. And she worked and she was easy and was, I mean, hustling and just a great talent. I loved working with her. Tomorrow, I'm hanging Ebony out. Ebony Booth, by the way. Ebony, yes, Booth. Ebony Booth. I'm hanging out with another one of Joe's former clients tomorrow. Going That's right. patch picking. That's right. You're picking an entire patch. Yep, that's why they brought me. I'm not <laughs> friends with any of them. Picking? Yeah, I'm but just there to. They just they just drive him from pumpkin patch to pumpkin patch, and then Grant goes, uh, that one. <laughs> Grant wants <laughs> pumpkin patch. <laughs> yeah. you, Grant, you only take one pumpkin. <laughs> uh, we went today. I went today with the kids. Took them to the pumpkin patch. Picked a couple pumpkins. Carved a jack o' lantern today. Classic. Classic. It was the first one I've carved in at least 25 years. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't. It's not like a, a tradition for me as an adult. And so oh. now that now that the kids are old enough, I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. We had a good Great. time. Do you do the whole thing like I'm killing it? Look at its brain. <laughs> <laughs> Look no, at it's I, dead now. Oh, I didn't even think of that. We shall I light do that its skull time. to scare other pumpkins from our porch. <laughs> you know, I didn't say all that, but when I cut the top off and pulled it out, it looked That's like thinking, something man. out of Alien. Yeah. And I pulled it out and I did go like, oh, oh my god, oh my god, and, <laughs> and both Glenn and Joe were like, ah! <laughs> Joe, honestly scared gwen like screaming and laughing and then started running around but joe was like <laughs> honestly scared i was like oh, i'm sorry buddy i'm sorry buddy just messing with you <laughs> throw it at him <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> what Grant, design did you do? Yeah, what'd you do? Did you do a classic uh, tri- two triangle triangles, eyes. Rise, triangle nose? Triangle eyes, triangle nose, smiley right. face, five teeth. Just a classic, because Gwen wanted the smiley face. She was like, I want it to be nice. I was like, okay. Smiley face, jack-o'-lantern, standard. Standard issue. Classic. I thought you'd do like a cheese whiz bottle. or a... <laughs> Yes, an easy cheese bottle. <laughs> and a cracker, and a Ritz cracker. A loaf of <laughs> Philadelphia bread. Uh, Grant, tell me more about this pumpkin picking. You're all excited. I've been four times this year. I don't want to brag, but I just Ooh, did. I, need, uh, I think feel like pump. I need tips from you at this point, but... Well, there's a lot of cool farms out here where I live. You want to get some fresh cider, you go right down the street and maybe you get some pumpkins while you're there. Uh, yeah, no, I, we're, we're going to a place. By the way, we have a friend from Vermont who was absolutely furious at being charged for picking apples in New York State. Apparently in Vermont, <laughs> you just go onto people's fields and you pick their excess apples for them and it's a favor to them. And you walk off with three apples. It's, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's it's this crazy system they have there, but we don't have that here. But uh, I think I'm going to pull out the rotary tool this year for the pumpkin. And I'm going to do a really intricate design. Put on some some sanders, some cutters on there, and, and try to get something, you know, a little bit uh, more advanced than two triangles and some teeth. Are you artistic? Do you have those qualities? No. Those skills? I no. would No, but you can, like, you can print out things online and just have it overlap. You tape it on the pumpkin, and then you can follow along. It's not that hard. Okay. Yeah. That's not cheating? Sounds like cheating. No, I feel like you have a very strange set of morals I've yet to understand over half a decade. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. like that's... it's a minefield of morality. <laughs> Call in. Really Call in if you think that's cheating. Uh, oh, the phones are lighting up, Grant. Uh... <laughs> Why? Wait, I didn't vote on the phone bank being installed at your house. I didn't, Don't I worry about it. Uh, Skid, how are you tonight? Uh, how many pumpkins you got over your place right now? Uh, I don't know. I haven't been outside in about four weeks, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just gourds for you, huh? <laughs> I keep on running into Skid, like, outside, like, we pass, like, ships in the night, and every time I wave to him and say hello, he has his headphones on really loud, so I always just give myself a sad high five, like I, you know, actually was acknowledged, but Skid never sees me. Yeah, oh, well, I mean, we got, we got our hazmat stuff on, I yeah. have headphones in. And it's uh, it's just not worth it. To, I mean, we talk all the time. Like it's not worth it to undo everything and and talk to Grant on the street. I agree. <laughs> the last time it was me saying, "Oh, hey, Skid, how you doing?" Through a mask, and he was also wearing a mask. But then he just pointed at his headphones like he was on a phone call, and then he laughed at no, me. No, that's not what I was doing. I was oh. turning off my headphones, and then he just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, but again, it was like it wasn't worth it to like. No, no, I'm just turning off my headphones <laughs> because it's like, what are we gonna say to each other? You're right. Nothing. When you can just talk uh, once a week during the show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'm excited to jump back in. Obviously, brand new, brand new show, brand new cast of characters. Um, very exciting. Uh, I have it in my notes as Side Quest, Side Sesh, Season 3. The season 1 was Feast of Ravenmore. Season 2, uh, obviously, uh, The Midnight Mirror. And now we're on Season 3. Little did I know uh, we'd have four spanking brand new PCs to bring into this. Um, obviously, we started last week with a uh, an epilogue, if you will, to The Midnight Mirror to see the unfolding of what happened with now Nikesor in charge of Carpad, executes the Baron, executes his wife, executes Alfonso Braven and the Crystal Ghost. Karazor sees this and uh, through a, a helpful man in the shadows is told get out of here or you're next he runs off into the night as the flag of uh, the barons is replaced by a flag bearing the shiny mask of nikesor then we find ourselves north of nidal in uh where the hell are we help me out i know you're in the city of Kalifas in ustalav thank you nobody um, you're in the city of Kalifas, which is the capital, I believe, of Ustalab, port city. And we go into a bar called the Houndstooth Tavern, where uh, three adventurers, two uh, robed adventurers, and one wearing a mesh half shirt and a championship belt, are on, uh, you know, drinking away, uh, wondering uh, what, uh, what they're going to do. They need, it seems like they're in need of someone to add to their party. Enter Johnny Halfling to the stage. Uh, old Johnny gets up there, belts out a tune, 
no one claps, but you see in Johnny, perhaps the fourth member, the missing link to your party. You talk to him and say, hey, we're going north. We're going to the River Kingdoms. Uh, is this something you'd be interested in? He's like, totally. So uh, the four of you head out in that direction. On your way, you find uh, the city of Carrion Hill. It's rainy, so it slowed you down. You know you're not going to be able to make it to the River Kingdoms. You couldn't afford an inn last night. Maybe this town, a little bit more on the outskirts, will have something a little more affordable, so you go inside. You go into this town, and it's like completely vacant of people. And you think, well, that's strange. You keep walking, still no one. Finally, a town crier uh, surrounded by the town guard comes up the street saying, we're looking for heroes to help uh, Carrion Hill in their time of need. So you're like, all right, we'll check this out. So you go up to the the city hall, Crown Manor, and you meet with the mayor. Mayor, uh, mayor, what's his fuck? Baron uh, Banton no, Hegri. Banton Hegri, and he's like, "Oh, thank you for coming. No one else is there besides the crows." And he's like, "So, long story short, uh, the city is under siege by some massive, possibly invisible abomination that has been coming up probably from the ground." capsizing buildings and killing people. We sent our guards this morning to the first site of three uh, where this has gone down and the guards were massacred to the last. Some of the bodies haven't even been recovered. We assume they're dead. Uh, would you be interested in checking this out? 1,500 gold if you give me some information. Another 3,000 gold if you help us deal with whatever this threat is. So you head over to the downtown, escorted by a couple of their guardsmen, the crows, to the slipper market. You get there and you see this building, uh, this small building that is capsized in. You find out a little bit about Carrion Hill, that it's a hill that has been built up over the centuries, over old versions of the city. So underneath the hill is just a mass of tunnels and uh, ruins of former versions of Carrion Hill. It's the city on the city on the city. The city <laughs> on the city on the city on the city. Man, the city. look at that. Um, Nailed it. Synergy. No one knows how long it's been around. So you go over there to check it out, and uh, it's a sane man. The crows uh, tell you about this guy. He lives across the street. He's a cobbler. His name's Tarig. Evidently, he saw everything go down. Go talk to him. You talk to this guy. He's a little bit weird. He seems a little too cool for school talking about it. But he says, basically, he saw this go down. He saw people just being lifted up into the air by nothing, twisted and wrung out like a dirty rag and thrown on the ground. People running out of the building and being sucked back in. Something awful's going on. You don't like the cut of this guy's jib. Uh, you go and <laughs> burst into his house to try and take some of his coffee. Uh, he's known as the early riser around town. Uh, you find out why. He's, he's, he's some sort of drug addict. You find a ton of drugs under uh, his second floor floorboard, and then you're like, thanks for the coffee. See ya. Uh, and thankfully, that NPC interaction is now over. You go back <laughs> towards the house with the drugs. <laughs> And uh, the crows lift up a rope and be like, please be careful. It's, it's something awful in there. This black slime, it stinks. We don't know what's happening. Please help. And you see on the wall here, let's go to the map. It's a blood stain. <clears throat> they even have it on good old roll 20. And you see that the stain is in the shape of like a spiral. It... Uh, it seems very purposeful, like whatever this was, whether it was one thing, multiple things, whether it was a thing at all, just a force of nature, took these mangled bodies and rubbed them on the wall to create this symbol. You roll a knowledge religion check and you find out that that strange spiral is a symbol associated with magic portals and the dark tapestry, the region between the stars where the ancient gods are said to dwell. You also know, with your particular check, that that is associated with the old cults, those who worship those gods. This isn't like Phrasma worship. This isn't uh, Desna or Shalin worship. 
this is like cults of people that worship you know gods in the stars i wish that we had a the ability to have finished the uh, pathfinder play test because it was all about the dark tapestry and you know we, we just got too deep into it it was taking too long to finish and uh i don't know if we would ever been able to do cr20 encounters with the system that we were still stumbling through but man it was a phenomenal story uh, of all about the dark tapestry but we will revisit it here it seems you're standing in front of uh, you tried the door out front it's locked you're now standing in front of a hole uh looking into the building what do uh, you do, and please remind us again uh, who these new characters are that you're playing. Well, what? Uh, 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 Rafa uh, has taken off his aura glasses. Rafa Rumblebeard, uh, beautiful, cut off, mithril chain shirt, yellow, cut off denim jean shorts, red boots. He's taken off his aura glasses to take in the insane musings of the blood across this wall that he can't comprehend at all, especially just being a simple pugilist. While he is a MWA Southeastern heavyweight champion, he's never dealt with something like this before. Hold on one second. Yeah, we're not going to let that one go. Did Am I say, the idiot? Did you say pugilist? I said pugilist. <laughs> <laughs> did Man, I did I Grant. read that? Have I read that word and never said it out loud and I did it wrong? <laughs> you said pugilist. And it was one of those things where it's like, have I been saying it wrong? I, know, I, know. I was like, I always assume Grant is smarter than me. And so I was like, sh I was embarrassed for a second. But then I saw Matthew look askance. Oh, pugilist. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I got it now. I was like, I don't think that I don't think that generally follows the conventions of English. But who know, who's to say? It's a weird language. <laughs> I'm just, of, of all the ball busting that we do in this group, if you mispronounce something, you are pounced on like you're in a, a nasty high school. <laughs> uh, yeah, what, Grant, I, you should have just went with it because when you were like, <laughs> "That's what I said," like nobody on the audio show would know any different. But everyone on video could see that you were full of shit. You just, you knew you were lying. And you were like, that's, no, I, that's I, what I, I said. I heard, I heard something different because my brain is still attached to it. But I'm, I'm just deeply role playing a uh, seven intelligence score that Rafo has. Right. But so it. in taking that in as a pugilist, uh, something he's unaccustomed to, he reaches into a multicolored uh, fanny pack on the side of his hip. And pulls out another pair of glasses. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this is pure madness, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing crazier than madness itself is Rafo Rumblebeard. <laughs> and he uh, then, looking into this building uh, that can't get by, before anyone else makes a decision, will do a high jump to get onto the roof if he can't get in any other way. <laughs> DC 16 to jump four feet in the air acrobatics check should be how, able to. How high do you think this roof is? How high is the roof? Is it a single story? Is it's it four a feet, house it's for four ants? feet high? Uh, I, if I get four feet off the ground, Matthew, I am uh, 10 feet to my head, and then I have my arms to reach from there, so I should be able to reach the top of it. So you want to try and grab the top? Yep. Uh, and then pull, right. pull myself up. What did you say, DC 16? I'm going to make a DC 18. Okay, that's uh, against the rules, clearly written in acrobatics, but. We're... You don't know how high this roof is. I'm, I'm adjusting <laughs> for the size of the actual roof. Uh, 20. 20. Nine, on, nine on the die, total 20. <laughs> he just you're stands hanging. there and jumps onto the roof. You're hanging on what very little uh, is left of the roof. In fact, it almost feels like it's going to crumble uh, beneath your massive uh, muscular weight. But you're, you're hanging on there. What do you do? Uh, I'll try to do a pull-up. I don't know if you want another check or anything like that, or a strength check or Give something like that. Give me a strength check, yeah. A two for a total of two. a six. You start to pull yourself up and you yank the shingles down and you uh, crumble to the ground. Uh, I'll say it's not that far of a fall. You land without falling or hurting yourself. Okay. But you just got like a chunk of the roof in your hand and then ta -ta 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 more falls down uh, and knocks uh, Verin unconscious. Well, he did only jump s six feet to the roof. <laughs> It's holding. Yeah, the length of my body. Do you understand how like people dunk basketballs 
Yes, they, yes. It okay, wasn't a okay. standing jump to the roof like a <laughs> superhero. <laughs> I thought that's what I pictured was landing on his feet on the roof. I, I thought think he was a so, hero. For every foot past <laughs> uh, four foot, like it's an extra uh, two on the DC check. So to jump 10 feet would be like a a DC like 28 or something like that. It would be really <laughs> hard to hit. <laughs> standing still. <laughs> but not impossible. No, 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 no. Matthew, you see uh, Ruffo Rumblebeard do this. Tell me about your character and what you're doing. Um, there was a door on the other side of the building, right? That we could yes, go through? it was locked. Uh, Ruffo, how are you with strength? Uh, pretty good. Hold on, let me dust this. And he takes the debris from the, the roof off of himself. Just show me where you need it. I'll apply it. Mind kicking down the door? I can certainly try. Is that just a strength check? Ah, uh, yeah, straight up strength. Uh, Matthew, just remind us uh, who Vern is. Ah, uh, yes. Hello, I'm Vernon J. Crabapple, <laughs> cleric of Phrasm. And you're a goblin. Oh, and I'm goblin. You buried the, the lead part. there. You buried the I lead. <laughs> you know what? Why don't I just do it? <laughs> I'm a goblin. <laughs> and I have male pattern baldness. <laughs> I right, haven't seen the best of us. Go ahead and roll a strength check there, Grant. I hope you get better than a two. I did. Um, the thing about just straight up strength checks that sucks is like you don't have the bonus of skill points in it, so it always feels worse than like what your character is. Uh, but I rolled a thirteen, so that's a total of a seventeen. Okay, uh, great. All right, so that's enough to bump. You bump, <laughs> bust through the the front door. Um, and then I'll allow you guys to see into that space. Um, so you're over there and you see there's a wall, the sign of in shambles. There's a pretty bad stench coming out of there and you see maybe a buried body, but also like body parts laying about. Um, it looks like a living room, maybe total disarray. Uh, the doors within the house have been smashed open. Um, and then obviously the northern wall that you were standing at uh, in the alleyway has exploded outward. Um, the furniture in the room totally in shambles. And don't forget, it's raining. That rain has not stopped since you've entered uh, Carrion Hill. That's on uh, me. That's on me. It's okay. I didn't bring it up again. Uh, but the rain is leaking in from holes in the roof, including the new hole that... Uh, Rafo just made um, but as much rain is seeping through it is not washing away the thick layer of black slime that seems to coat every surface in the room slime that must be the source of this horrific stench uh, that is coming out of the room like an open grave uh, it's kind of like burnt decay maybe that the, the smell of the air before a thunderstorm um wet and diseased fur kind of all of those rolled into one um and then like i said scattered amid this rubble and debris you see what looks like at least one body and then just parts of a body uh too many to be uh from one victim however you don't see any blood what do you do um Zakari uh, is standing behind Rafo. He's a human um, Kelishite, uh, dark skinned, sun sort of just uh, sun beaten, sand beaten, weathered face, uh, late 30s, early 40s. Um, also male pattern baldness. Uh, that's why he and Vern get along so well. Uh, <laughs> And he is pretty heavily armored, though. He's got a morning star at his side. And seeing this, he slowly draws it out. He has training in medicine, pretty extensive training. Uh, and he comes from a college where they do a lot of research into not only magical healing, but mundane healing, the anatomy of the body, how to teach people how to heal. Uh, he's a, a medicar or a doctor. So he looks past this, and he, I want to do a perception on the sense uh, or and listening as well, just to see if I hear or pick up anything, any sign of uh, current 
and present danger uh, as opposed to just the awful scene in front of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, So quick perception check, uh, 26. Okay. From standing out there, perception check, you see looks like uh, an opening leading uh, down into the room, uh, like another room to the south. Um, You don't see or hear any imminent danger, any other type of movement whatsoever. Um, certainly anything that could have caused this destruction ca- cannot be about at the moment. But you do know from Tarig's story, if he's to be believed, uh, that when they came back, all was silent. The guards, after you got the guards, they went in there and it was World War Three. They mm-hmm. came immediately, ah! He heard screams. They came running out, and then an invisible arm pulled them back in. One smashed it down to the ground. So your your kind um, of your your perception is telling you one thing. His story is telling you that you should still be on high alert. Uh, detect magic. I'm gonna waft over this entire area. The cone in front of us, in front of Rafo, in the house. Hold for a moment, Rafo. See if there's any residual magics here. Nothing. Right. He puts his hand gently on Rafu's shoulder. Go with Asokar's blessing and be careful. And he's going to cast uh, resistance on you. So you've got one minute of a boost of fortitude. He's thinking maybe they'll be so nauseating or something in there. Uh, it might help you with the smells to not retch. And Rafa will step into the building to clear it out for uh, his companions to make sure it's safe for them to step in and investigate. All right, you step in, and uh, you don't know who Asokar is, but you're glad you've been blessed by him as you roll a fortitude save. Wow. Wow. Uh, I'm glad I got the... What is the bonus to my fortitude save? Plus two? Plus one for Plus resistance, one. right, Joe? Plus one. Okay, so that is a total of a 12. 12. Three on the Just die. made it. <gasps> you walk oh. in and you're just like, oh my lord. I mean, you smelled what I explained outside. Now you're in it. It is so many smells. I don't know what your experience with death is. This is beyond uh, just death. It's this slime. This slime is exuding a smell unlike anything you've ever smelled, but you're able to keep it down and power through. You get in there, I've revealed more of the room. You see more bodies, more parts. It's it's horrible. Um, roll a perception check. Okay. Natural 20. For Bad a ass. 28. He stops himself from, from, from ralphing everywhere, and then he just has... <laughs> otherworldly insight <laughs> you see definitely three heads one of them still appears to be attached to a body um, whereas the other two are severed from the body um, you see a torso that has like a, uh, a badge reminiscent of like the captain of the guard so you think perhaps this was uh, Captain Garrus that they were talk- talking about that went in there, led his men, led his sergeants in there, and never came out. They said they never retrieved his body. You would think this is probably uh, his remains and then the remains of at least one or two of his uh, sergeants. Um, beyond that, you just see fragmentary and, again, bloodless body parts there'll be a severed foot absolutely no blood at the point of severing it's very strange being um able to uh staunch back whatever sense of uh sickness might fall over anyone else in his party uh rafa will slowly and encouraged by the fact they are bloodless move the parts kind of out of this room it's not really how a crime scene normally operates, but he doesn't <laughs> want the rest of the crew to like have to like retch on top of everything so they can examine it, which is something he's not good at. So, hmm, brother, take a look at First these. First thing we need to do is clear all this evidence out of here. Let's toss it out the door. 
<laughs> so you, you, you throw out as many pieces as you can out the door of the bodies. And uh, the crows about see this. And they kind of stumble towards you, a couple of them. And they're like, those, those are our men. That's, that's Captain Garris. Commander, Commander Garris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, well, we, we weren't holding up much hope that they had survived. Oh, I'm going to have someone run back to the mayor and tell him that we've found their remains. Can you secure the rest of the house? Yes. That will sure. be taken care of. Fear not. All right. Yeah. Uh, if you could just um, kind of do this uh, surreptitiously. We don't want everyone seeing all these body parts. We'll, we'll, we'll set up another tent over here if we can just uh, kind of keep this low key for now. Could we have a bag or something? <laughs> uh, I, I suppose we could... Um, yeah, yeah, we could wrestle up a, a Just bag. like a burlap sack. Just something to put this stuff in. Sure. Um, uh, I'll, I'll have my men here help. And uh, a couple guys come over. They hand you, like, a sack. Okay. A sack of, like, barley. An empty barley sack. Uh, <clears throat> Zakari is like, thank you. And I am terribly sorry for your loss. Yeah. It is the falling of a good commander. It's a devastating blow to any force. But the next man must step up. Which of you will it be? He like sort of like cat, you know, gazes across all of them. Stay strong. Your city needs you. And they look to each other and and nod, uh, knowing that ultimately it's probably beyond their choice the mayor will appoint someone to take over but you see one of the guys goes off to inform the mayor see ya uh, Rafa will also take out his water skin actually he'll use I think he has a cup uh, in his adventuring gear he'll use his like uh, pewter cup that he would use around the ca- campfire at night for coffee or whiskey or whatever and he'll use, he'll take you said there was goo on the ground that the rain didn't wash away yeah, that black slime isn't going anywhere. So he wants to take that out because he heard, I think Johnny in particular, but I mean, maybe everyone wanted to investigate that, and he's not able to, and he wants to bring out a little bit of that to them as well. All right, so you're able to get a little sample of it. It's everywhere. There's no way you'd be able to clear it all up, and if you try to, like, wipe it, it's not really coming away, but you're able to scoop uh, a sample out, and uh, you can bring that outside to your party. Um, <clears throat> Zakari is going to go deeper into. Uh, are there? There's still bodies in here, right? Uh, I just didn't clear them out. Okay, so they're all outside the house. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's just going to do a, a heel check, just really thorough uh, examination to try to see if, uh, like, if there's any blood inside the bodies at all. Good idea. Uh, among other things. Um, Ooh, 28 heal. 28 heal. Um, no. There's no blood inside the bodies? No, and, and with the 28, you, you can't tell if whatever drained the blood, if it happened uh, like after the fact or during. It's hard to tell, but it has been completely drained to the last drop. So the, the parts have this pale... Uh, like whitish, uh, you can see the veins underneath, but there's nothing in them. It's it's very, it's you maybe you've seen undead. It's it's creepier than undead skin. And there's no other evidence of any kind. No, like uh, the round around the wounds or anything. There's no like you don't per, see any burning puncture marks or, or anything or, yeah. like that. Yeah, no, nothing, okay. nothing like that at all. Uh, Zakari wanted to go further into the building if if they're done with their uh, investigation Rafa will head in and clear out the rest of the shrouded area 
All right, so uh, you dig in a little more, and you see another small room, uh, and there's a door. Uh, this looks like probably uh, a bedroom slash library, um, and and it's obviously in shambles as well, like the living room. The furniture is all splintered. Uh, the shelves and all the books that are on the shelves have been smashed and torn, and uh, just like the living room, everything is coated in that thick, stinking layer of tar-like sludge. That door frame uh, to the southwest, uh, it, it's, it's burst open uh, with a, a burst hole that's larger than the door frame, um, and you see a flight of slime-smeared stone steps leading down into darkness. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> um, um, could I first do a knowledge religion on things that would remove blood like this besides vampires? Like to see. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah, go uh, go with the knowledge religion. Uh, natural seven for a 13. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of creatures. The drained blood, um, you know, the, the most obvious is the vampire, but there are plenty of uh, creatures and things that you've never even heard of. Uh, this would be their their mo. So, without knowing really what you're dealing with, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, shall we go down the stairs? I don't know. It seems kind of creepy. Creepy is our jam. Uh, okay, you guys are just blowing my mind here, but okay. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. But before we go, I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to call upon the blessing of the coolest god there is, Shaylin. <laughs> cast a little spell. A little, a little magic from Mr. Johnny Halfling. And I'm going to cast Lucky Break. So... When I cast this and one of the next failed rolls of the party becomes a success. Oh, that's oh. cool. So I have to roll a D10 to determine what kind of roll it will affect. So I rolled a five. So that is a skill check. And then Troy, you roll a D4 and that will determine which which failed skill check it'll be. If you roll one, it'll be the next failed skill check. If you roll two, it'll be the the one after that, etc. Okay, I rolled a one. So the next okay. failed skill check is a success. That's cool. It's a success. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah, really that's cool. Great. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, Rafo just entered that bedroom there. Um, yeah. And Rafo, the rest of you, Rafo you put a, a torch before he head, heads down because he can't see if it's dark. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Zakari turns to Johnny. You are wise in your hesitance. Stay close to me. You'll be all right. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll try to keep you safe too. I have a couple of Johnny Halfling has got a couple tricks up his sleeve. So. <laughs> I do not doubt that. That is why we brought you along, is it not? Hey, Johnny Halfling's here to please. I guess so. <laughs> Johnny um, Halfling, Zakari, and Vern roll a fortitude save. Ugh. Ah, yes. Ooh. 23. Oh. 27. Uh, 14. You're all all right. You're able to withstand that stink and not become <gasps> second. Johnny covers his mouth with his with his signature pink towel. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys enter the room with Rafo, uh, just uh, stepping over, crunching uh, torn books. Uh, you see that blasted open door with a slimy staircase leading down. What do you guys do? Ruffo's happy to lead the way, if that's all right, brothers. Yes, please do. I'll follow close behind. Vern, would you like to be right on Ruffo or behind me? I like to stick as close to the muscle as possible. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then behind me. <laughs> uh, all right, go ahead uh, down there, Grant, and we'll follow you. 
All right, so you uh, leave the bedroom library and head down the stairs. They turn about 10 feet in and now direct your attention south to that little open space on oh, the road. Oh, so no. Now. Getting claustrophobic, <laughs> <No>. dude. <laughs> I'll leave space for four of you. Oh, dear. Where are we coming from? Are we coming from the northern stretch of this? Uh, you're coming from... Yeah, oh, okay. And then yeah. turning right and continuing down. Yeah. Uh, could I... All right, so is it complete darkness in here? Besides uh, his, tor- his torch? Yes. Okay. Um, I have I'm going to cast... That matters for... I'm going to cast light on myself, on my uh, buckler. And... Uh, and then I just want to do a perception right now, just really listening, see if I hear anything okay. echoing up these stairs. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, you don't hear anything except the uh, sounds of like you guys trud trotting on that sludgy slime, that squish with every step, but you don't hear anything in the distance, just kind of like a like light wind echoing. Okay. Does this appear to be a, a, a basement, or is this some sort of? Are we in that city underneath Carrion Hill? Are we Ooh. in the hill? So, you you leave the uh, the collapsed house and you start heading downstairs, and as the stairway turns, um, you you see that there's like traces of dust and debris lying about that indicate to all of you that maybe at one time this was all clogged with rubble, but was recently cleared out. Hmm. That's what you notice. Now, Rafa, do you can do you keep going down? Uh, trepidatiously, but uh, unless he is told to stop by his party mates. Stop. Then... <laughs> all right, brother. <laughs> this seems strange, does it not? Um... I'm going to do a survival check, uh, just trying to see any sense of path. If the, if, if the guards made it this far, if maybe I can see any sign of their boots or anything like that, if they cleared the path, uh, 16 uh, survival. Uh, no, in fact, you don't see uh, any fresh footprints prints in the slime. Um, but with, with a 16, you can tell that this black slime came up from below, uh, judging by the amount that is smeared on the walls and ceiling of the staircase. And whatever it was had to squeeze itself into the space in order to clamber up these stairs, as evidenced by just the amount that's on the walls and the ceiling. Um could There's I do almost, a, I was going to say that the slime is le, is dry and less foul smelling here than it was upstairs. Um, so you don't know if that means it went back down right. or if it went out. Okay. Um, what about uh, a knowledge arcana on the on the slime, just to see if it could be connected to a, a magical beast that I've ever heard of or read about? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll do that too. Ooh, twenty. Natty 15. 25. Natty 20. Um, Yeah, it it doesn't ring a bell exactly into anything. I mean, it it has all the the trademark feel of some sort of aberration. But Mm -hmm. uh, not that you're not like, oh, it's a this. Yeah. It's not ringing a bell. Okay. Um. (laughs) It's great looking at the stream and just seeing... The map is a tiny little staircase surrounded by black. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. I love it. I love what it. What do you mean the stream? Only you don't see yeah. that, Troy. <laughs> but it's nice to see what you guys see. Uh, all right. Rocco, proceed with Rocco. Rafo, proceed with, Rocco. Rafo, proceed with Rocco. Right, <laughs> Rocco. I'm going to start stumbling and rumbling and bumbling down these stairs. All right, this is where things take an interesting turn, at the turn of the stairs. So, uh, Matthew, as Vern, you asked, um, does it look like you're going to a basement or does it look like something else? Well, at first, like I said, you saw this rubble that looks like it was cleared away. 
Did the thing clear it away? Did people clear it away? You don't know. However, when you get to this second turn in your descent, the architectural style changes <laughs> to an older one involving now like stone arches and brick lined walls. So what started as just a wooden staircase down wooden walls uh, smeared in slime it now is looking much more gothic and epic with stone uh, arches and bricks wow can I do a quick knowledge history to see if I recognize the architectural style or anything yeah uh, 14 I'm ringing a bell it, it looks it looks very, very old. Um, wait, is that a failed skill check right there? Oh. Ooh. That is a failed skill check. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, this. Okay. Well, that's that's really interesting to have that pay off. What right a lucky here. break. <laughs> lucky break. Thanks a lot, Shaylin. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> Shaylin. Um, okay. This, I want to really have it pay off for you. This looks like it could go back to like Thessalonian times. <laughs> got this. Guys, got this. It has this... all the markings of like that time. This is <sighs> Thessalonian type stuff. Is it? Wow. Incredible. Like thousands of years old. This is crazy. Look for uh, any writing or symbols, runes on the walls. I I have studied Thassalon, and oh. I may be able to identify these things. Disappointing, of course, that it is not Aslant, but you can only take what you give, what you that get. great, though, that you know that. Okay, I'll be on the lookout. <sighs> I can't believe I didn't see it myself, Johnny. I know. Uh, <laughs> you are surprising, Johnny. <laughs> it's it's all Jay Lynn. It's not Johnny Appling. It's, it's all Jay Lynn. Uh, I can't take the credit. <laughs> uh, very interesting. Rafael, of course you proceed with care, but it elevates now. Thassalon is known for its traps. It's arcane wards to keep it secret. Oh yeah, I heard they like to fight dirty. Ruffle likes that. <laughs> Ruffle likes that. Ruffle, Ruffle descends. Yes, I'm sorry, Johnny. Ruffle, I've been working on a ring song for you. I think I've, I've got something. Ooh, like. you, yeah, that sounds good, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll have a chance to debut in just a few more steps down this crooked stairwell to the past. Oh. Madness. <laughs> <laughs> Rafa continues forward uh, to the next turn. It turns, uh, goes another 10 feet or so down, and then uh, turns again to the uh, east. <clears throat> Now that it's changed and it's clear that it's changed, even though, even if Rafo can't appreciate the architecture and the historical significance as the rest of his party can, he understands uh, that it's worth checking for traps now. So I'll just do a perception now to check his feet, to see if he'll stumble, to see if there's any tripwires, anything like that. Sure. Uh, that is a 23. 23. You don't see anything that uh, jumps out at you. Feels like it's going to trap you. Zakari is also going to, you know, I don't know how you want to handle this, but every step he takes, he's listening for danger, looking for traps, and uh, trying to find secret walls. Because he also knows that that's a big thing in Thassalon. Um, is they, you know, these structures, they would also ha often have secret doors and stuff like that, back entrances. So I don't know how you want to handle it, if it's a perception every five feet, or what, he's going to be touching the walls, looking all around, and then listening ahead for danger. Um, you're good right now. I'll uh, keep that in mind. What's your perception bonus? Plus 10. Plus 10. Okay. Uh, okay. Ready to go if you guys are. Yep. Absolutely. Down, down, down to the next intersection. Down, down, down to the next intersection. This could be a good one because you see at this turn it opens 
into a room. What do you do? I enter the room. This opens up her head, brothers. Be ready. <laughs> you enter this room and... <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Back up, back up, back up. <laughs> well, that's a classic, Joe. The back up, back up, back up. That's from like oh, yeah. episode one, isn't it? <laughs> it's come up a few times in the history like of the network. I feel like it's in the tease to episode one. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's one, but yeah, it is. A, it's in a tease early on. This chamber's brick-lined walls are supported by 15-foot-high stone arches. And between each arch are uh, circular alcoves that have been cut right into the wall, each containing a stone sarcophagus. You can see it on the map. It looks like one star sarcophagus on the southern wall has toppled over and its contents uh, have spilled out onto the brick floor. Uh, its contents, of course, being a uh, long-dead occupant. There's a pile of bones dressed in fragments of armor uh, and an ancient-looking uh, rusty sword uh, lying nearby. So it toppled over and just zing, zing, zing. Its sword went flying as well. A dry swath of black sludge nearly 10 feet wide runs right down the center of the room, connecting uh, the stairwell that you're coming down and another stairwell Rafo to the northeast, which I'll reveal in a second. The far end of the hall seems to have collapsed long ago, but there's another door uh, to the south there at the far end of the room. Uh, there's also pretty consistent uh, symbols and imagery throughout. That of a single eye and a blue-green crest with a crown and a lion. Huh. Hold on a minute there. Let me take a look. Uh, and Vern would like to do a, a perception check uh, to see if there's anything lying in wait in this room. I also uh, should specify that my, I get a bonus to detect haunts and incorporeal creatures. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you that. I'll give you both numbers. Okay, that is a 21 for just a general perception, and okay. then a 23 for haunts and incorporeal creatures. Um, okay. Listen, you really hone into the room. You hone in not only to what you can physically hear, sense, see, but that, that little bit of beyond what may be uh, uh, some sort of spiritual energy uh, haunting the room. You get a sense of that second part but it's so faint. It's just like the voices of these uh, that are interned here maybe still echoing throughout the room. But beyond that, nothing. Uh, and detect magic. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 Nothing. No magic. And just a couple ghosts talking faintly. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rafo's gonna head to the other end of the room to secure the premises so that the rest of his crew can investigate. Head to the other end of the room. Uh, obviously a door to the south there, and then you see a staircase leading further down. Oh, man. Goes about uh, 15, <clears throat> 15 feet and then turns to the east. You said that there were remains that spilled out of a sarcophagus? Mm-hmm. Zakari is going to examine those, um, try to determine, you know, if these are ancient bones or relatively recent. Uh, th this is a heel check. Um, 28. Okay. Um, at this point, what's left are just bones that are barely have scraps of clothing um, clinging to them, which leads you to believe that it's been a long, long time. These are long dead bodies. Uh, there's a Human, sorry, human yep, bodies. Yeah, human bodies. Um, you get the sense that this was some sort of shrine, perhaps, um, that has okay. been turned into a crypt. Um, but as to, you know, more about these bodies, the only thing that you really see is the imagery of the eye 
and that crest. All right, knowledge religion on the eye. Okay. I'll do uh, one too. 14. Uh, I got a 15. Uh, 26 for Johnny Half. Okay, Shailen. so Johnny and Vern, if you feel like it's on the tip of your tongue, Zakari, but you're not, uh, you're not quick enough to the draw between Vern uh, and before Vern and uh, Johnny say at the same time, Aradin. Oh. Ready, ready, skid. One, two, three. Aradin. Aradin. Jinx. <laughs> How could I not see that? It's been so much of my study. <laughs> this is incredibly embarrassing. <laughs> That's a long but what about, there was there was the uh, symbol of the eye, but then there was also the symbol of the crown. Yeah, it's like a blue green crest with a crown and a lion. A crown and a lion. How about uh, knowledge, nobility. Nobility be perfect. I don't have it, but I'm sure Johnny does. Joe Johnny. I don't. You're well, you can still knowledge. roll it as a bard. No, I, right? I, I don't think so. Not Are you level. only a first level bard? Yeah. No, I'm second second level bard. Pretty sure you can do you it. You should have it. I think it's higher up. I, I don't have it here. Bardic knowledge is first level. He might have replaced uh, it with something else. So yeah, yeah, he can make any knowledge skill check untrained. Yeah, the archetype might have taken it away. Yeah, I don't I don't have it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and who puts invest in nobility? Not enough people. I have two characters that have points in knowledge and ability. I believe Thank you very much. Unfortunately, none of them are playing in this game. If you're not putting five points in knowledge and ability, you're playing this game wrong. That's mm. what I that's what I always say. Especially when you get two skill ranks per level. <laughs> it's just the closest Troy ever gets to being a used car salesman. He's like, listen, if you don't get the extended warranty on this 1982 LeSabre. You're a damn fool. Be a damn fool. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. So no one knows anything about that symbol, huh? Uh, uh, could I could we roll a history or? Uh, you could. Uh, really, nobility is going to help you. You crush a history, though. I might be able to help you. Otherwise, it's something you're going to want to take back to the mayor or somebody else. Maybe they can ring up. Maybe they know somebody that knows somebody that can help you out. But history. Give me a really good history. I'll no, try. I don't have it. Don't it, have it. it, it <laughs> felt it felt like the vibe from the, the mayor is that they built on top of these, like, ancient whatevers, but they, they don't care to investigate. Like, it would be too much effort or, like, they're just living their lives, like... We could maybe get some mumblings from them, but I, I doubt that they would be like experts in whatever we bring back to them, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it sounds it sounds like, and looking at the hill itself, that like you could spend a lifetime down here and never uncover uh, all of what used to be. Yeah, to me, it just sounds like they're... I, I don't know. They might, though, have some, uh, you know, knowledge of sigils and stuff like that. True. You know? Uh, they may be taught some history in that sense, but but yeah, I kind of like the idea that like they don't delve into it too much because like where they live is kind of like it's kind of a rough area, and there's still a lot of war going on around. It's like we have much more important issues than uh, delving into the past. Um, and there are different reasons in different cities in our real world that are built on top of other cities, and there's, there's sometimes I like to think most often it's the Pompeii scenario where a huge disaster happened and people won't find it for forever, not because like architecture got better. So like, that's, that's usually how I like to imagine these situations. Like it's, it's, it would be like uh, tempting fate or too difficult to see otherwise. I don't know. Uh, I just checked my archetype and I can do bardic knowledge untrained. Great. Let's get popping. 18 knowledge nobility. Boom sauce. All right. Boom salad. Uh, it is the crest of Taldor. Oh, oh well, for Christ's sake. All right. <laughs> Taldor <laughs> Northwood were here. That's what I'm thinking to myself. It's like, you know, just because you, the players, don't recognize it doesn't mean that it's like yeah, a slam there's... dunk crest that you would know. Like, as a boy, you would have been taught that if you were raised in the nobility. There's but... no chance that Zakari doesn't know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. His country has stars, been in a cold stripes. war with Taldor <laughs> his entire life. It's it's like us. You just never thought to look at the flag. 
Yeah, it's like us <laughs> growing up and like being like, no, I've never heard of Russia. Like, what? What? No, he's definitely now he's even a little bit more concerned, uh, a little bit more worried. Yeah. So what the the Taldor uh, Talden Aradin connection is, you don't know, but that's certainly what you're dealing with here. A door leading to the south, a hallway, more steps going down to the north. Following you, Rafa. I think we should check what's behind this door before we go any further. And he steps up. Uh, we'll do a quick perception check to see if there's anything fishy to him before trying to open it. Okay. Um, 17 plus uh, 25 perception. No, doesn't look. Nothing out of place. Doesn't you don't hear feel anything. like you're going to listen. Don't hear anything. You don't feel like it's going to explode on you if you try to open it. Goes to the handle or whatever. Oh, tries to open it. It it's it feels like it's locked. It's not budging. Uh, he'll attempt a strength check to crack it open. Okay. Natural twenty. Oh. Twenty four. <laughs> Wow. Success. I would have gave it to you either way, but it was DC 24 to uh, bust open the door. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but then at 20, I'm... I would have been like, well, how can I not give it to him? But I uh, rarely, uh, I've rarely, I haven't run many adventures, but I rarely see DCs like that as like an even number, unless it's like an ability from like an enemy. It's usually zero or five at the end. That's weird. But you pull, you pull that thing right off its hinges and you see that it was barricaded uh, on the other side. Um, Perhaps someone was barricading themselves in. Let's Careful. see what we see here. Uh, Hello? Hello? It's a small room, uh, about 10 feet uh, long and 25 feet wide. Uh, the, the, the walls of the chamber are all brick, and its ceiling is supported by stone arches, like the uh, crypt that you're in. And you see on the southern wall remnants of bedrolls and other camping equipment <laughs> what the just mean? lying there. Um, looks to have been used recently. It, it feels very uh, Bloodborne, Dark Soulsy right now. It feels like an oh, ancient yeah. society that's oh, it's so great. Uh, yeah, this room right here is where the bonfire would be. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll go in there. Uh, and a perception check. Uh, yeah. I'm going to take 20, so a, a yeah. 30 on okay. this room, just looking through all the pallets and bed rolls and seeing if anything was left behind by whoever was here or any evidence of who they might have been. Uh, looking around, it seems like it might have been three to five people for sure. Um, recently here, there is some excavation equipment, but like not very much. So whatever they were using, they took with them. But you see remnants of stuff. They're like, oh yeah, this clearly they were digging here, trying to find something oh, or get through. Um, but it's so hard to tell. Like with the, with what little information you have, there's another wonder, door to the north on the opposite side of the room. I wonder if anyone knew about this expedition or anything, right. or if this was done in secret. Who, who who was it again? Who did they say what lived in this house? I believe Tarig uh, said uh, old man Martian. That's right. Old no one questioned him. Well, the mayor himself seemed rather honest. I don't believe he knew of any such excavation. This is troubling indeed. Man, I should have asked him about old man Martian. I just, I knew it. there was something I should have, I went on about the shoes. It's like, who cares? Well, I have his drugs, so we could all take some of those. Uh, right. uh, don't. Also, it isn't as if anything he says will hold up in court. He's a drug addict. Can't believe anything he says. That's true. Unless these drugs help you reach a, a plane of higher truth. They don't. I'm familiar with them. <laughs> uh, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to do something I forgot to do, uh, and he'll he'll tell the group this basically, which is these sarcophagi. He wants to go back and examine each alcove for uh, any sort of doorways behind them. Okay. 
okay. also knowing that this was a common thing uh, at the time. So, um, do you want me, me just one perception give me, check? Give me two perceptions and uh, the higher of the two. Uh, okay. Little luck. Uh, 24. 24. Uh, no, you don't see anything. Okay. And uh, ready to move on when, when everybody else is. Into this door. Yeah. Hopefully it is not barricaded in the same way uh, as, you know, they may have secured or felt secured on that side. So here's hoping Rafa reaches out to open that door. You open the door and uh, just like the room that you're in, total darkness. Uh, the light of your torch is helping who because you can't see. I, I meant to ask you guys this. Do you, all of you have dark vision or none of you? I have dancing lights on. Yeah, Matthew does. I have light cast magical light on my shield and Grant has a torch. So we all have sources of light and Matthew has dark vision. All right. So with your sources of light and with the dark vision, you see uh, the room is just the other ones. Dark mounds of rubble uh, lining the walls and the chamber itself appears to be partially collapsed. But here and there, there are patches of brickwork uh, visible on the floor and walls. Uh, there's looks like one rounded alcove remaining in the north wall uh, but unlike the crypt it lacks a uh, sarcophagus I'll do a reveal this room is uh, not uh, angular like the other ones mm. do the polygon reveal polygon reveal me <laughs> Um, does the awkward nature of its line seem to be because it's a like a natural cavern, or is does it have the same Thessalonian sort of carving, Gothic sort of structuring around? It's hard to tell because of bare the, rock because of the collapse. Like this may have been uh, a part of the crypt, and the the maybe the wall between it collapsed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to tell where there's that one alcove left. If it had a sarcophagus, you'd be like, oh, this was all one room, but it doesn't. It just has that shape that's very similar to the previous room, but it, it lacks the sarcophagus. Um, Rafo and Zakari, go ahead and roll a perception check. 16. 28. 16 and 28, eh? Ugh. 16 and 28 indeed. 16 and 28. You don't say. Those are pretty good rolls. <laughs> 16 and 28. Both even, both multiples of four. Uh, mine is 28 if it's a haunt. 28 if it's a haunt. Mine's a 45 if it's a surprise combat. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI. Uh, well, here's what happens. No. <laughs> As you enter the room and you're uh, you're adjusting to this, uh, there's this debris everywhere. You see these small, small in stature, not small like animals. These small in stature, humanoid creatures <gasps> leap out of <laughs> the buried brick, and they're covered in these like filthy stinky rags you can smell it the minute you walk in there a hood over their face and the only thing that is visible is like a long white nose peeking out oh. from under the hood uh, let's <laughs> let's take a peek at what these weird things look like yeah uh, you heard of these Joe? I know exactly what they are Smurf yeah. that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And uh, I really, roll for initiative. I really feel like Zakari does too. Let's do this. <laughs> oh baby. Oh, oh baby. I feel like I've seen these baby. before in some, some Yeah, they are played. extremely common. Yeah, extreme. Once you start delving, once you start digging deep underground. Uh all right. I've never okay. come across these. That's funny. You've never come across them? No. Oh, aren't they, okay. Aren't they I've had like, them in at least four or five adventures, like PFS and stuff like that. And Are they similar uh, to Duragar? No. Well, maybe. I don't know much about Duragar, but they're not dwarves. They're, well, I'm not going to say anything. But let's just play okay. it out. And, See how it all plays out. Uh, Rafa, what'd you get? Rafa rolled a respectable 16. Nice. Very respectable. Uh, Johnny? 
Uh, 17 for Johnny Halfling. 17 for Johnny Halfling. Uh, Vern. 21 for Vern. 21 for Vern. Zakari. 14 for Zakari. 14 for Zakari. Let's talk about the surprise round here. Um, So, Zakari and... Sorry, I'm all thrown. Zakari and Rafa will get a chance to act in the surprise round uh, where you were the first two in the room. Uh, you uh, both see them, but, and actually, you rolled really high, Zakari. You would have caught them all, but uh, they rolled higher than you. So you guys get oh. to act in the surprise round, but they uh, they all go first. So the good news is one of them has to move. So one of them closes on Rafo, and that's actually would that be a five foot step? I think it would uh, be. Yeah, five foot step. All right, so five foot step takes a stab with a dagger at Rafo. Old Rafo, that is going to be a fourteen against flat footed. Rafo is so covered in baby oil that the stripe just slides <laughs> off of his body and he says, try again, brother. Try again, brother. Uh, all right. Uh, then the one right next to him, uh, right next to you, Rafo, goes and makes a stabby stabby against flat footed cracked eye. I'm using the die that I don't want to use. 18 against flat. Oh, you got right through the mithril chainmail. Exactly my flat footed. <laughs> Let's get down to business. It's going to be uh, four points of damage. And now I need you to roll, I think, a save here. Um, what save? Fortitude. Yeah, it's going to be fortitude. I just want to see if it. Uh, what'd you roll? Uh, 16 for a 24. You're all right. So it stabs you, and you feel some sort of poison on its blade start to seep into the wound, but you're able to hold off from whatever it was. And the other one is right there near Zakari. It takes a stabby, stabby at Zakari. Ooh, net a 17 against Zakari. Uh, that is going to be damage wise. Uh, two, only two points of damage, but now I need a fortitude save from you. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, don't like this. Fort save. There we go. 23. 23. You're all right, LaRusso. Uh, all right. So they all got to take a standard action in the surprise round. Now, still in the surprise round, it goes Rafo and then Zakari and then top around one with Vern. Uh, Rafo, what do you got? The free standard act- or move? Free action, Rafo looks at the thing that stabbed him and says, you just made the biggest mistake of your short, pathetic life. Strikes out at him. As they emerge to attack you guys, you just hear them like, like talking in some weird foreign language to each other that you don't recognize. Uh, That is a 23 to strike as he spins out in a lariat. That's a big old hit. Stan the Lariat Hanson. Uh, 13 points of damage. Oh, brutal. And that's the one uh, right next to you or the one to the north? Yeah, I went for the one right next to me because, you know, he hit me. He hit you. You're mad at him. Yeah. Uh, It's a really deep character. (laughs) <laughs> He's just pure id. Uh, Zakari, you're up. Uh, Zakari is caught by surprise. Um, oh, this is tough. Not going to hesitate, though. He is going to... He's flanked, too, I just noticed. Yeah, he's, he's flanked. flanked. He, flanked. He, he, seeing that, uh, he's in a very dangerous situation. He's going to... Uh, he's going to cast defensively and cast a spell. So he will attempt uh, to cast defensively here. Talk us Uh, through it for the listeners at home. What DCD got a hit? What type of bonus you're working with? um, Okay, so I have to I have to hit a DC 17 uh, and I have a plus 11. So I have to roll a natty 6 or higher. You got this, dude. On the die. You got this. Natty 12. Got it. Uh, and he, I'm going to cast. more nerve than casting defensively. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. You got to have faith in these circumstances, surrounded by an ancient religion, which will give me a uh, plus two buff to my AC. 
okay. which I'm, you know, I need to get through around. So I'm hoping that'll help. All right. Not only are you flanked by these two things, you're also blocking the doorway uh, for uh, Vern and Johnny. If oh, they yeah, were. yeah. So I'll also uh, take a five-foot step to get out of flanking, which I was going to do anyway. Sure. Uh, and I don't so think just... you can. Surprise Why not? It's, it's not an – it's a free action. Yeah, I did it too for one of Five my – Five-foot step is a free action. Little creepy dudes. Uh, assuming, Troy, that I can occupy the this tight square in the rubble, can I not yeah. occupy that? You okay. can occupy it. Uh, and where it's more than 50% exposed, I will say you're not squeezing. If you wanted to try and occupy, like, uh, uh, the space that they're in, uh, that they popped out of, then I might make you squeeze. Okay. But right now you're okay. Uh, all right, let's move. Goes with a slight tinge of panic to his voice. Vern! <laughs> <laughs> yes? There, we move to the top of the round one, and it is Vern's turn. Right. Are they talking to me? I uh, know, they're just talking, shouting orders at each other. Can I do a knowledge check to see uh, what these fellows are? Sure, it is going to be a knowledge local. I don't have that. Well, they get um, out of my bar. Okay. Uh, get us! Since I do not have that, that... I've never seen the, the armor that they're wearing. I've never seen this type of armor before. Okay. Uh, Vern will draw his bow. Uh, he has a, a bow that he... A longbow that he's affectionately named Iphigenia. <laughs> and he will... <laughs> And he will fire at the northern... Oh, of course, they're in melee. Uh, yeah. Small little room here. Small little collapsed chamber. Okay. Well, then rather than then rather than draw his bow, given that the circumstances are tight, he will instead cast a uh, spiritual weapon. Ooh, baby. So a spiritual phrasmic dagger appears uh, in the space next to... Uh, the northernmost guy. Okay. It's huge. Nice. Just, con just confirming that that <laughs> yeah, casting time one action. There it is. Uh, and then I'll roll to hit with that dagger. Okay. Let's see what you got. Classic spiritual weapon. Uh, came up a lot in our, our now defunct Jade Region campaign. Mm. Okay. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. That is a hit. Beautiful. Nice. Okay, and even, and even though it's a dagger, it's still 1d8 because of the spell. Uh, awesome for you. So I that is you get your wisdom bonus to that damage, too, as well, if I'm, unless I'm it's, misremembering. It's plus one point per three caster levels. Oh, okay, different. So it's just a plus one for me. Um, so that is going to be max damage, nine points of damage. Dude, phenomenal. Wow. That's awesome. A dagger, a dagger <laughs> appears out of nowhere and is just like, meow, 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 at this guy's head. Stabby, um, stabby. And then I will take a five foot step to the side in case Johnny wants to get involved. All right. Uh, it is their turn. The one that just took that attack from the dagger will five foot step away from it to flank Rafo. Uh, getting that flank bone, getting that sneak attack, John. And uh, we'll try to stabby, stabby Rafo. Ooh, buddy, that's going to be a 20 adjusted. That's a miss, brother. Yeah. Wow, big old miss. Uh, his buddy, who took a, a big wallop uh, from Rafo, will now uh, attempt to hit uh, with the flanking as well. If a 20 missed, then that's definitely going to miss. And then the guy at the bottom uh, will... Oh, boy, I want to move, but I don't want to provoke from Rafo. So he's going to five foot step and also attack Rafo. This is good. might be three big misses. I'm going to switch die here. Maybe, maybe some 20s. Oh, this is going to be a 20. Uh, no, I'm not flanking. It's a 19. So it's a miss. Nice. Comes in. They all step, step, step. Uh, like uh, you're being assassinated. And instead, you uh, survive. It is now... Johnny Halfling's turn. Okay, first I'm going to do a knowledge local on these things to see if I know what they are. Okay. Do you know your voice mod is on, Skip? Are you aware? Oh, it, it, <laughs> oh, it should not be. I don't yeah. know why that is. For a is. second I was like, well, he's really uh, grabbing, get, getting us in the echoey chamber. <laughs> this thing out? This thing out? Uh, hello? 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 <laughs> there we go. Still on? It's perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is a 20. 
on the Malatmogul. These are creatures known as dark creepers. <laughs> dark creepers. Okay. Uh, is that what you thought, Joe? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are they evil? Uh, hey, hey, he rolled the knowledge check, Charlie. Maybe. Uh, they, are they? <laughs> they, is that what you want to know? Uh, they are uh, not evil. They yeah, they're, are they're not evil. Neutral. Uh, they're kind of like, I actually thought about trying diplomacy, like, in that first round, but I was like, what's he really going to do when he gets jumped with knives? Like, he'll cast Shield of Faith. Because these guys are like, you know, they they can be, you can talk to them. Uh, I know that much. They uh, give you a little information on background on them. They lurk in the black places deep below the surface of the world, venturing forth at night or into neighboring societies when the urge to steal and cause mayhem grows too great to resist. Um, they're just filthy, filthy creatures that live. Oh, yeah. Isn't there deep, any deep kind of save for, like... Uh, smelling them or anything like that because they stink they do stink you smelt that when you came into the room but you've been smelling stink all along and then they were hiding in the rubble with stealth checks and you Mm. beat them but they were they're just really quick they weigh about 80 pounds four feet tall (laughs) they come up and got you and i believe they speak under common is that the language they speak their own dark dark folk or something yeah they speak their own strange language uh i can tell you what it is uh, yeah, it's dark folk. But so you know these guys really. What were they in a <laughs> what should we call it? The AP you ran? Uh, no, no, th- no, they weren't. They were in some PFS stuff that I ran really? and, okay, and a module yeah. that I ran. Yeah, they look familiar when I see the photo, but I don't uh, ever remember coming across them. Anyways, let's get down to oh, what they uh, can do. Uh, are they fey? Are they fey? They are, are they not fey. No, okay. they're straight up dark folk. Um, so this is the most important thing that I'm going to give you. They have death throws. Remember the old Remoraz? Oh, yep. Oh, no. yep. But their death throws are a little bit different. When it's slain, it combusts in a flash of bright white light, uh, leaving its gear in a heap on the ground. And everyone within 10 feet has to make a fortitude save or they're blinded uh, for a certain amount of time. Uh, so um, it's almost better, but worse in some ways. Uh, when they die, they just explode in white light and could possibly blind you. So that's what you know about these dark creepers okay so then johnny halfling's gonna shout out says rafo okay so this is the ring song it's a work in progress i just really wanted to focus on you uh, just have it everybody be saying, this is this is this guy's awesome it's like i'm ready for this guy to fight okay so just bear that in mind okay All right, okay he's going to summon his his music <laughs> how's it going oh dear how's it going when this guy fights in the ring, bay, You know, it really brings the wood. <laughs> it's a ring song by old Johnny Halfling. <laughs> and shout out to Shannon, because she's the source of all things good. <laughs> uh, I said, I, I mentioned being vague about, uh, well, whatever. Well, I'll give you notes later. That's pretty vague. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm. Uh, I'm pretty hyped up. <laughs> She's the source of all things good. Yeah, he could have named and the he things. Brings the, he brings. I the didn't wood. name anything. That's like that's very big. <laughs> he could have listed all of the good things. I he, normally do. He that's plugs himself version. and Shaylin in, in Rafa's <laughs> ring. <song. laughs> that's old Johnny Halfling. Hey, who's the best? Old Johnny Halfling. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ring song, my little Johnny. <laughs> so uh, everybody has inspire courage oh, plus one oh, yeah. attack and damage oh, and saves against fear effects. Oh man, I always regretted not joining your campaign, Joe, because I've heard of Skid's Bard uh, that he played in. Uh, why am I blanking on the name of this? Council uh, AP? of Thieves. Council yeah, of Thieves. You know the thing with Skid is that I think for so long, for five years. <laughs> He's been tortured to just not bring this to the, for- the to the forefront because he played it for so long, and he was like, "I don't want to play that character again." But nobody in the nation heard that character. No, and he was a halfling bard that was a mother rock star, <laughs> and he just he. I mean, and th- this guy is different though. Like Johnny Halfling is very different. That halfling was a little more uh, Paul McCartney. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> they talk like this. And he's yeah. like, oh, right, fellas, here we go. He was like one <laughs> of the Beatles. Number two. This guy's a little more of a crooner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Hope so good. Well, you're all inspired, and uh, it is Rafo's turn. Was that enough to uh, inspire you to act? Oh, yeah. It was quite enough to inspire me. And Rafa cracks his neck as a move action and instigates martial flexibility. You will see oh. the results of which next round. But before that happens, he reaches out and socks the guy that <laughs> stabbed him right in the face with a punch <laughs> to the this face. This dude right next to him. Oh, uh, that was... Uh, sorry, it's hard to see. It's on the floor, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's a 24 to hit. That... Is a hit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, not great damage. 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage is enough to blow this dude up. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So here's what happens. He uh, explodes in a flash. He combusts in a flash of bright white light. Uh, Rafo and Zakari roll a fortitude save. Fortitude save. Uh, 17. 24. Neither of you are blinded. However, both of the other dark creepers are blinded for a uh, certain amount of rounds to Hoisted be determined. Hoisted by your own creepy petard. Blinded by their own buddy. Uh, <laughs> so that thing just explodes. You guys that are out in the hallway, uh, Johnny and Vern, just see, poof, like someone just took like an old-timey photo in there. And... Uh, Luckily, uh, Zakari and Rafo are not blind. Moving on to Zakari. Uh, uh, in the space where the one guy exploded, Zakari is going to move quickly, deftly for an older uh, man, middle-aged man, over his corpse, around to the other side of Rafo, uh, step into that square, and then attack the one that is now left uh, that's immediately fighting Rafo. Okay. Um, with a... Morning Star. So he's got this freaking spiked ball on a chain. Swings it around. Whoop, whoop, and brings it down for a crushing blow. 22 to hit. Yep, Ooh. his AC was already lowered, but you just uh, destroyed. And nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. Unfortunately, he is still standing. Ah. He's still standing as we go into the top of round two. Vern, you got a dagger. And uh, what do you want to do? Okay, so as a move action, Vern will direct the dagger to uh, go after the northernmost dark creeper. Okay, the one that uh, old Zakari just smacked with his morning star. Yeah, and I believe spiritual weapon a attacks as a spell, so I don't think I get the benefits of inspire courage on this. Um, and it's just my wisdom. Bo my wisdom bonus is the plus is the to hit. That's what modifier. it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which happens to be the same as my to hit modifier. I knew that whiz bone came in handy. Uh, natural 19. Is that a critical threat? Or is oh, for a spiritual uh, it dagger? It depends on the weapon. Yeah, if it's a dagger, right? Isn't that a critical threat? Uh, I mean, look at the spell. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, does it act like the weapon? It does, I With think. With the same critical no, threat well, range? You know what? It has the same to hit and same damage, I think, regardless. Well, yeah... I, it has I remember, the same threat range and critical yeah. multipliers as the real weapon of its form. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Cool. I remember threat. reading that like it matters who your deity is when you cast spiritual weapon. I do remember reading that. Yeah. That's why it's a it's a it just takes the form of your deity's uh, weapon, like the emblematic weapon of your deity, or a form that's significant to you. But Phrasma is Vern's deity, so I chose the dagger. Um, Nicely done. All right. Two confirm. Two confirm. Mm, Twelve. 12, because it's blinded, its AC is crippled, and that is a critical hit. <gasps> nice. 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 So is, I think this is a spell. It would be a spell critical, though, Joe. It is. Say. It is a spell critical. Uh, okay. Spell crit. Okay. With Interesting. It's a spiritual weapon, right? Yep. Oh, Are you able to gosh. blow away the dust on the spell crits submitted <laughs> I know, ages ago? I know. <sighs> these people that put these ones in. Wow. There we go. Uh, wow. Clutch crit. Clutch okay, crit. here we go. This one from, I mean, who knows if these people are even still subscribers. Christian from Fredericksburg, Denmark. Ah. Whisper from beyond. 
Ooh, that's kind of perfect for the whispers that Vern uh, sensed when she was looking for, or he was looking for haunts when he came in. Your magic is so powerful, it tears a hole in reality and brings back a spectral copy of your most recently deceased ally. What? The spectral <laughs> copy has the image of your ally, but acts as the spiritual ally, acts as capitalized spiritual ally with the following exception. Oh my God, it's so complicated. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got right. like a spiritual ally now. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's right, work out the you just damage. roll double damage? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but talk to me about this in terms of story. When you were at the bar, you were looking for Johnny Halfling because you felt like you needed somebody else to join your party. Was he replacing someone that passed? Was uh, there an ally in your party that passed? You know, I, I'm trying to remember back to our backstory, Joe. I don't believe so, right? It was yes. you that got attacked, and I thwarted your assassination. Yes, no, but we had a party member that had recently passed. Come on, man. So what does he look like? What does he look like, Joe? Right. Yeah. Uh, this Matthew, it's your turn. It's your crit. What does he look like? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he appears to be a. Uh, I have no idea. What I don't remember this back. He's a horseman. He's a full-on horseman. No. He looks like Rick Flair. We did not. We left it blank Woo! on purpose. It's oh. a totally improv job. Okay. So, yeah, so what whatever you, you do is, is oh, okay. it can well, be as as anything can't you want it to be. You cannot get it wrong. You know, Skid, you kind of look like Rick Flair with that wig on. Yeah. It's well, imagine movie. Matthew that you were writing a play, and you had to come up with a character for that play. I didn't want to. What would they look like? I didn't want to ruin Joe's careful preparation, but now that I know I can't get it wrong. Yeah, get yes. screwed up. A centaur jumps into the air. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. A centaur. A centaur who, who wields a morning star. Ah. <gasps> Uh, That's probably why I liked him, and you were you, the whole time. You were like, "I don't trust this center. I don't trust, I don't trust this center. center." And I was like, "But he wields a morning star. You, can, you always trust a, a beast that wields a morning star." How? There he is. <laughs> how do you wipe yourself? <laughs> oh wait, I, I found an even better one. Uh, maybe you're using his morning star. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. that is there you great. Go. Because I have a character creation plus one morning star. So we'll say that he, it was this magical morning star that I picked Ripped up it along off the way. Corpse. Well, there yeah. he is. <laughs> the cent uh, our Spectral centaur version. ally's name was Maurice. 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 <laughs> and so, hold on. I lost. What damage am I rolling? Do I even Double roll damage? damage? Double damage. Double damage. Okay. <laughs> There he is. I've made him like a uh, like a Jedi Force ghost. With the yeah. yeah, seriously. I mean, I think Zakari, like having stolen the Morning Star of his corpse, is going to be shaken. They called him Morning Star Maurice. <laughs> uh, that's 16, 16 points of damage from the dagger. Uh, that kills it, and uh, it bursts out in white light. And uh, I need uh, Rafo and uh, Zakari to roll another fortitude save to see if they're blinded. Oh dear, this one a natural two. That's an 11. 26. Uh, nice. Oh, unfortunately for uh, old Joe O'Brien, Zakari is blinded for five rounds. Oh no. Oof. Brutal. Blind so you don't even think blinded. Only for a moment do you get to see an image of your old pal Morningstar Maurice before the lights go out. And he knows he knows that this is punishment because as the life was bleeding out of Maurice's <laughs> eyes, he swore to him that he would return his plus one Morningstar to his son. And he just never did. <laughs> <laughs> and so he appears in a flash of light and then blinds him. <laughs> his vengeful ghost appears. Ah, yes. Morningstar Maurice's son. Morris. <laughs> Morris. <laughs> a strange, oh, Carlos a strange Morris. lad, but uh, beautiful. Oh, I love this character already. Uh, <laughs> all right, good, good round for Vern. Well, actually, Vern, you still get your action. No, that is, I, I have to use a move action and then a, oh, do, do is this the spiritual weapon? Yeah, attack the spiritual is weapon acts. I think it, it it's its own thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Oh. In that case, I... Joe actually went blind. This camera Joe went. actually went blind. <laughs> uh, can I then m use my second action to move the weapon again, or is that one point, one time around? No, you're done with the weapon. Now it's just you. You're done with the weapon, man. Is that not enough? Move on from the dagger, you Matthew. You called back you the spirit of our dead ally and blinded me. 
All right. Well, do I have what? Well, he's in melee with my opponent, but can I get a shot off with a Fijinaya from where I am? Uh, no, you can't shoot around that corner. All right. So if I take a five foot step back, will that give me? Uh, no. Well, mm. I'll say you can hit that top of the square. I'm going to give it some cover. Okay. I mean, very low chance to hit because he's yeah. in melee with my opponent. He's a little dude, too. He's four feet tall. Come up, Fijinaya. Fly true. Fly true. So that is a 13 with the minus four. 13 with the minus four because it is blinded. Uh, actually, no, because of the cover, that is a miss. So Ugh. it just boom, uh, hits off the uh, the doorway and uh, goes flying. Moving along, it is the one remaining uh, Dark Creeper's turn. He sees his friends have fallen. He sees a giant blue centaur. Uh, <laughs> And uh, fearing for his life, he stabs out in vain, I'm assuming, at Rafo. Uh, it's going to be close. It's going to be a 21 to hit. Much like your entire life, that attack was in vain. Ah, this poor guy, he's rolling, he's rolling good <laughs> hits. But he's going against the guy with the highest AC in Galarian. Uh, so he misses. This is an opportunity to wipe him out. Johnny Halfling. Uh, yeah, Johnny Halfling's gonna keep. Uh, he's gonna stop singing and save a round. Yeah, and I think he's just gonna hold. Seems like got this well in hand. Yep, keeps a round of Inspire in the chamber and uh, it zips over to Rafo, the beast. It's time to show this munchkin a little Rafo razzle dazzle. <laughs> he moves his boots back and forth to distract him towards the feet. <laughs> As he unleashes a flurry of attacks, the first one is a standard punch to the old noggin. That is going to be a total of a... That, Wait, uh, I just realized I don't even know what class you are. Oh, Did we say that? It's mysterious. We haven't told anyone yet. Sakari. Are you a, Are you a brawler? Uh, I'm in the middle of punching someone in the face, Sakari. <laughs> Can we talk about this later? That's a total of a 18 to hit. It's a hit. Man, I'm getting crushed by that blinded. It's a minus five to its AC. Oh, that is going to be 11 points of damage. Brutal. And that was just your first action. Yes. What else you got? The second action, what I did was involved my martial flexibility by calisthenics. I am able to improve trip you. You will have no... <laughs> <laughs> Attack of opportunity against the whirlwind, the natural disaster, the master of your universe, Rafo, as he reaches out to trip you. Improve trip me. Improve trip you, brother. Um, that's going to be 18 against your CMD. Whoop! He falls flat yeah. on his ass. It's not a long fall from there, but he does go down uh five foot step any type of movement or are you done i'm done brother huge round for rafo rumblebeard uh comes back to you zakari zakari you're blind um you hear a <laughs> sound he runs of a... screaming towards the fight and swings <laughs> <Sitar>. <laughs> uh wait isn't the combat over uh no it's still it's still up he's laying on the ground he tripped you're blind Oh, oh, he tripped him. I'm sorry. I missed that. Um, I thought it would be more embarrassing instead of hitting him twice and killing him for someone else to do something to him. Uh, well, he's blinded. You know what? He's just going to say, um, leave one alive if you can. If you are able, we could question them about what they're doing here. Anybody? he's still blinded. Eh? <laughs> I'm sorry, Maurice. <laughs> I swear I couldn't find Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Centaur is just staring daggers at you. <laughs> As a dagger his floats around its head. <laughs> That's the round. Uh, <laughs> all right, goes back to the top of the round. Goes to Vern. Vern, uh, <laughs> Rafo just socked this dude and then trip him. Uh, how long does Ma Maurice stick around? Uh, he is he is slowly fading out of existence. Maurice, I'm sorry about the Cheerios. <laughs> and, he, and he gives you a quizzical look like he doesn't remember what you're talking about. And Never mind. <laughs> the first Goodbye. last thing he said. Farewell, Cheerios. dear friend. The Cheerios? Sorry. Shh. Sorry. Fades away. Um, <laughs> the Cheerios? 
Cheerios? Listen, we were adventurers. Things happen. You don't. It's just, you know, sometimes you don't get the chance to say that final thing you need and to say. I he doesn't even remember. I didn't realize that General Mills transcended space and time. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, Grant. You think I'm talking about the cereal? Yes. Uh, that's a story for another time. You had to have been there. Uh, uh, all right, what do you want to do? You still got that floating dagger. Uh, you did hear Zakari ask to try and keep them alive. Um, what do you want to try and do? So I will hold them if, you know, if we're going to try to keep them alive. It doesn't make sense to strike with the dagger, so I'll just hold for now. Okay, it's laying on the ground. Uh, it's clinging to life, and it just looks up at you, Rafo, and it's like, Oh, now you're talking my language, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like doing the Ric, Fla- Ric Flair backing into the corner. <laughs> oh, you may have had the fanciest shoes, the nicest sports car, and all the babes, but you can't stop Rafo Rumblebeard. <laughs> And then it socks you and gives you like a oh. a low blow, <laughs> <laughs> kick to the groin. Uh, it wow. is uh, surrendering. Do you accept its terms? I accept. <laughs> uh, you are out of combat with this dark creeper that is begging on its knees, seeing its slain friends uh, now lying uh, in pools of. Actually, no, they're gone. They're they've exploded into white light. Uh, he thought he could. Uh, even things out, but he didn't. The dagger disappears. What do you do? This thing is talking its own language. Side note, if we all exploded in a burst of light when we died, I think there would be less questions about the afterlife. Like, that's a pretty cool way to go. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that's definitely heaven. Yeah, see that white yeah. light? <laughs> you see that? There's something going on. It was huge. I'm blind. <laughs> For like 18 seconds. Uh, Zakari's going to just... But once his vision comes back 30 seconds later, just blinks a few times, sees the creature uh, surrendering. And he's just like, we, we do not speak your language. Common. Do you speak common? Uh, Johnny's going to step in. So like, uh, I think, uh, Old Mama Shailen has got a little something that could help. Blue and casts Comprehend Languages. Ooh, man. Right. You've always always wanted you guys to have that at the right time. I never had it. Good. Yeah. Gotta love Johnny Halfling. He's always got something. Uh, so he's just like, ah, 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 and then it starts to make sense. I, 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 please don't hurt me. Please don't kill me like my friends. Please, please. I don't want to be a ball of white light. I don't want to be a ball of white light. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. And uh, Zakari is going to sheathe his morning star. I'm sorry, but you leapt from the shadows, attacked us. We had no choice. It is not our wish to exterminate you. Please, it is a misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, uh, misunderstanding totally. Uh, we were, we were, we were, we were hired. To, to protect this area, that, that's that's why we did it. Uh, but you guys, you, you guys seem nice. If you let me live, I can forget about the old deal, and, and we can make a new deal. And I could maybe just leave and go back home because this, this is all bad. This is all very very bad. By the way, he can't understand us. We can understand him, but oh, I can't, he can't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Could you uh, cast... only I can understand what he's saying. Oh, but... okay. Okay, so he's just we kind of infer- inferring from your tone, then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Oh, maybe, that's interesting. So I could, I could just, I can go. I, 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 I what, 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 what do you need to know? <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, just tell us everything that you know about this place. This, this place. Uh, we. We no, it seems like you understand me. We were hired. Uh, there was there was a, a group of of five men, five o- older men. Uh, they they wore thick cloaks, and 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 they told us that uh, that our job was was to guard this area and and then help clear the stairs to up up. I I haven't been up, but we removed rubble leading 
to upstairs. And then they said we were to guard this area. So so we did, but then something really big uh, that, that smelled, smelled really bad uh, came through here and, and, and I assumed that uh, it, it killed those five men. I don't know when it happened. We barricaded that door in the other room and came in here uh, just kind of waiting waiting to see if the, the men came back or if, if enough time went by that we thought we could just go back to our homeland. But now my best friends are dead. Uh, giant balls of light. And uh, I don't think we're getting paid for the job uh, that we had. So I'd like to just go home if I could. Uh, that's that's really all the information uh, I have. Uh, other than that, the, the, there's a cave up there that's very old. And there is bad magic there. And I know bad magic. I've seen a lot of bad stuff way down deep. There is there is, there is uh, bad magic. And, and the men, the old men, they were doing even worse magic in there. We saw it. And we just, we kept to our job. We cleared the rubble. We guarded the area. And then everything went to shit. Okay, I relay all that. Hmm. He just wants to go home now. Is that is that all right? I'm sorry. I uh, hit you. Um, He's or, or sorry. tried to hit you. Uh, Zakari is going to kneel down uh, in front of the creature, look it in the eye. Uh, obviously, it's kind of hard to see because of its yeah, hood and its like wrappings, and it's like he, two little red dots. He chokes back the 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 stench, the odor. But Zakari is no stranger to the decay of death, the smell of of decaying bodies, really brutal odors. But he swallows it, looks at the creature, and just nods. Go home. Go now. And sort of sends him on his way. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you. Uh, my friend's belong. You know what? You can keep my friend's belongings. I'm going to just go and uh, make some new friends. <laughs> <laughs> if only all of our enemies were so evolved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am gonna talk a little dark creeper in the after party. Just say it. We go into detail on these guys a little bit because there's something funny that came up for what you said and what I know and everything. So after you said party, what I know what you said. Yeah, man, I want to hear it. If, I that might come does, to that if that doesn't <laughs> tease an after party, we're gonna talk Pathfinder dark creepers. How do you not? How do you not? Join my, that after. My email is exploding with paper. <laughs> <laughs> God, I can't. I gotta close this tab. <laughs> uh, all, right. all right. So he tells you, yeah, five men, thick cloaks. They were to guard the area. Now you you realize you put two and two together. That rubble that was cleared, they were clearing it from down here. So whatever was happening upstairs wasn't clearing down into it. Maybe these five men came from underground up into mm -hmm. this house that has now been destroyed and they enlisted the help of these dark creepers but then something weird happened and they blocked themselves in here they think that where those old men haven't come back maybe they got killed but they were petrified so they were just kind of like living up to their end of the deal it's like we'll keep guarding and then at a certain point we're going to try and get out of here they said there's an old cave up ahead full of bad magic they saw the old men doing even worse magic in there so perhaps got the, some good information. They've uh, they opened a portal from another reality. Yeah, yeah. They they tapped into the dark tapestry. They opened a freaking portal. Um, all right. But these old men. Isn't it always old men? Always. It's all, why, why do these old dudes always have to do this nonsense? Can't they just retire? Can't you just play chess in the park? Don't you just go sit? Outside your apartment building on a folding chair with your black socks and your sandals and just right. watch the day go by back and forth, back and forth. Play Can dominoes you... with your family. Right. <laughs> Can you just yell at the kids for unscrewing the fire hydrant? Come on. <laughs> it's much less dangerous. Uh, Is there anything on the bodies? that, ex Or what were the bodies? Uh, so, yeah, the pile that's left uh, there, uh, you find two daggers. They were both wearing rag armor. Um, and uh, they didn't have any money. Uh, they, however, sorry. they did have a couple vials of poison. So among them, uh, there's four vials of poison. 
That's what I was going to ask. I, I'd like to take the poison, unless anybody okay. else has interest in them. Four doses. Uh, what is the poison? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Knowledge Alchemy. It would be Knowledge Alchemy, which I don't have, technically. Which sucks. Johnny Halfling does, though. Johnny Halfling. <laughs> I can check it out. You have Craft uh, Alchemy? Night Craft Alchemy. Oh, Craft Alchemy. No. Yeah, I, I got to put a point in that. I really do. Yeah, um, like, for some reason, I was like, knowledge alchemy. There should be a knowledge alchemy. You know, there's knowledge blank space. Anyways, yeah, you're not 100% sure, but uh, you should have asked him before he left. What does this poison do? Yeah, I, I, I felt like it was really, I felt stunted by the, the fact that we couldn't talk to him. I was like, ah, I don't know. I'm not Here, sure how to ask these questions. I have an idea. Let us let the strongest among us among us take a sip, and we shall observe, with a scientific eye, the results. Vern, as usual, your instincts are impeccable. Rocco. <laughs> uh, Rocco. Once again, it's a Ruffo, and uh, I kind of took so. a dose in the side of my abdomen with a dagger earlier. I don't know what drinking it would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this, Troy? How about this for? stretching it a little bit. I got stabbed in the side and saved. Uh, perhaps I've had experience with this type of poison before. I am a doctor after all. Could I roll a heal okay. check, having been hit with it, to see if I could determine what it was? Sure. Oh, this is like um, <clears throat> the, got... the name of the pain scale that has like the bullet ant towards the top is oh, named yeah. after a guy who actually got stung by all of those creatures and raided <laughs> them. So this is like exactly what that is, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, bummer. Uh, 16. 16. Uh, this is what I'll, I'll tell you. I won't tell you what the name of it is, but it, you know that it is a poison that would do strength damage. Okay. <clears throat> it's, it's a good thing uh, Rafa didn't take a sip. Uh, it feels vaguely familiar, but uh, cannot place it. Perhaps strength damage it's is... It's black in color and thick, viscous. Yes. Shall we head up the stairs and see where the old men did their seance of sorts? <clears throat> yes, I'm sure there's no danger there at all. Uh, lead the way, Rafo. Oh, yeah. Of course, Vern misspoke as you are going down. 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 Yeah. Oh, I, thought, I thought they said upstairs. They um, said they said forward. I they, think they were talking about upstairs, meaning the the stairs leading to the house. That's the rubble that they cleared. Ah, but you guys are going. No, yeah. but, but when you said where like the um, where the old men were doing like the magic and stuff, where the scary magic is and everything, you just Troy, you just said like uh, ahead or forward. Ah. Uh, I assume that meant down. Is that accurate? Like that we're moving in the direction. That seems they... to be accurate in that yeah. there's no other way to go except down these stairs. Right. So down those stairs you go. And that little alcove thing that is a weird shape that just collapsed flavor, basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to roll Dungeoneering, uh, you can to try and get a sense of what was going on in that room. I shall. Oh, 24. 24 yeah this was probably uh and actually if you look uh at the map here i can reveal the space between them uh it looks like uh like a puzzle piece like it just right. collapsed and was one long chamber uh but where the uh sarcophaguses went no one knows but instead you guys take the descent and it is a truly long descent you start going down 5, 10, 15, 20 feet you're walking for a while, 100 feet still nothing just heading deeper and deeper down at a certain point you look behind you and the extent of your light and your dark vision is gone and you just see darkness from where you came you look ahead, farthest away from you, 60 feet of dark vision, darkness up ahead. Move again, another 100 feet or so, still Whoa. darkness. And not only that, but you notice that as you descend, as you wind deeper into perhaps Carrion Hill's past, uh, the style of the stone 
starts to change. The architectural styles as you wind deeper start to change like you're going through time. <laughs> Another 100 feet. You're 300 feet oh down. Oh, my God, dude. Wow. Well, this is where these guys come from. Like, the dark creepers don't come from 100 feet below the ground. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're coming from way deeper. 400. <gasps> 500. Oh Must be hard to Start breathe. Start feeling it in your ears. Yeah. You see that like the stone is, is starting to change in places to look more like uh, just a natural cave, but there's still uh, existing architectural structures that are unlike anything you've ever seen. Maybe if you visited the Black Rose Museum, you've seen something like this, but nothing uh, just walking around the streets of Galarian. Uh, you go deeper, 600 feet, 700 feet. You go 800 feet before the walls completely change to a natural cave. Oh my God. And swaths of dried, foul smelling, but not sickening, black slime cake the last 50, 60 feet or so of the stairs all the way down into a enormous, wide open cave. And you oh see God. fluorescent colored lights up ahead. What? Bio, some bioluminescence or something? Water dripping down along the walls, leaving narrow trickles down the stairs as you complete your descent into the following room. Oh, baby. God, <laughs> dude. Uh, uh, before we ever got down here, by the way, who wanted hits on the wand of cure light? I will take one. Thank you very much. One for uh, my man Rafo over there in the corner. And that would be great, brother. Uh, five, five per HP. Perfect. Okay, so two down on the old wand. Two down on the old wand. I'm going to reveal the entire chamber to you because it is no longer. Uh, dark in here because of the bioluminescence of this fungus flora and fauna throughout. Did I get that? Look at that polygon reveal! Oh, nice yeah, that polygon was legit, reveal. dude. That is legit. Wow. Ancient stone pillars support a stone ceiling here that is hundreds of feet up. Thick sheets of pale fungus and mold cake almost every surface that you can see. Uh, those both close to you and those to the distance. To the south, like around the corner from where the stairs descend, uh, the hall has collapsed in rubble. But to the north, it opens into a vast caver cavern in which eerie glowing light flickers. You see that thick, dry smear of black slime all over the place, strange circular patterns in the mold running from the flight of stairs, which you just descended north into the cavern. And you also see two bodies. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So scared. <laughs> Raffles familiar with mushrooms, brother. <laughs> Hope you got your pumpkins ready. It's Halloween <laughs> on Side Quest Side Tish. Oh, 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 800 feet below! Oh.